Okay, class. So yesterday we learned that by definition, in order to show that two figures are congruent, you have to show that all of their corresponding parts are congruent. So for triangles, that's six things all together. Three sides, three angles. Now, what we're going to do over the next few sections is learn some shortcuts for that. And today we're going to learn our first shortcut so that you don't have to prove that six different things are congruent in order to show that two triangles are congruent. So the first one we have, our first shortcut, is called the side-side-side congruence postulate. And you can abbreviate that SSS, okay, for side-side-side. Now, this is a postulate. It is accepted as true. If three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of a second, that's all you need to show that the triangles are congruent. So, if side AB is congruent to segment RS and segment BC is congruent to segment ST and segment CA is congruent to segment TR, then you can say that the two triangles are congruent. Now, remember from yesterday, when you write a congruent statement, the congruent statement, the parts have to be in corresponding parts in the same corresponding places. So angle A corresponds with angle R. If you look, A is where the one with one and three tick marks come together. Angle R is where one and three tick marks come together. So that would be triangle R. B is where the one and the two tick marks come together. S is where the one and the two tick marks come together on the other triangle. And with C, it's where the two and the three come together. Two and the three. T is where the two and the three come together on our second triangle. So remember, the order matters with the congruent statements. Triangle ABC is congruent triangle RST. So that is our first shortcut. We don't have to show anything about the angles. If I can show that three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of a second triangle, then I can say that the triangles are congruent. Okay? And you can try that out if you want. Take three different size pencils and make triangles with it. You might be able to turn it, flip it around and stuff, but it will only make one different size triangle. All right, so how do we use this in a proof? Notice we have a paragraph proof here. We're given that FJ is congruent to HJ. Uh, remember, whenever you say something in a proof, write it on the picture. And G is the midpoint of segment FH. Prove that triangle FGJ, okay, again, triangle FGJ is congruent to triangle HGJ. So we're trying to show that the green and the blue triangle are congruent. Right now we've got one pair of sides are congruent. All right, so here goes our proof. It is given that segment FJ is congruent to segment HJ. So that's one of our sides. All right, so if I do a little check here, there's one side. Since point G is the midpoint of FH, so that means that segment FG is congruent to segment HG. And again, when I say something in the proof, I make sure to mark it on the picture. So there is our second set of sides. By the reflexive property, if we look, segment JG is in both of those triangles, and JG is congruent to itself. So segment JG is congruent to segment JG. Mark that in the picture. And that is our third pair of sides. So by the side, side, side congruence postulate, remember we can abbreviate that SSS, we can say that triangle FGJ is congruent to triangle HGJ. Notice the corresponding parts are in corresponding places. Uh, what I would like you to do next isn't in your notebook, so just kind of do it off to the side. You've got a little bit of empty space over there. I want you to rewrite this proof as a two-column proof. So go ahead, pause the video, and rewrite the proof as a two-column proof. 
All right, so basically, all you had to do is take those three sentences and change those three sentences into what the statement and what the reason are. We know that FJ is congruent to HJ because it is given. Segment FG is congruent to segment HG because of the definition of midpoint. Segment GJ is congruent to itself. Both triangles share that side. That is the reflexive property. And you'll notice that is all three, okay? One, two, three pairs of congruent sides. So we can now say that triangle FGJ is congruent to triangle HGJ. And the reason is the side, side, side congruence postulate. All right, go ahead and do checkpoints one and two. Again, make sure you explain your reasoning and go ahead and pause the video, write down your answer, write down your reason, and start up and we'll check our answers. Okay, with our first triangle here, we've got the nine congruent to the nine, the eight congruent to the eight, and they share a side, so that's congruent to itself. So yes, the two triangles are congruent. Now, double check your congruent statement. JKL goes across the 8, across the shared side, and then the 9 would be the last one. MKL goes across the 8, across the shared side, the 9 would be the last one. So again, corresponding parts need to be in corresponding positions. So the answer is yes, and the reason would be side, side, side congruence postulate. Now if we look at this next one, we know that segment ST and segment WV are congruent. RT and TW are congruent. That's only two sides. We need all three sides in order to say that they are congruent. So the answer here is no. Uh, and the reason would be we only know two sides are congruent. Now, it, if we knew that segment RS and segment TV were congruent, then we've got RST congruent to TVW. So if that were true, then it would be yes by side, side, side. But based on what they wrote, no, they only have two sides. We need three to say they are congruent. All right, so moving right along. Uh, determine whether triangle PQR is congruent to the other triangles shown at the right. So we don't need to worry about the angles. We just need to worry about the sides. So here is triangle PQR right here. Let's find those side lengths. Well, PQ, we can count that. That's 3. QR, we can count that length. That is 5. So for the other side, you could use Pythagorean Theorem or the distance formula here. Go ahead and figure out how long segment PR is. Remember, you don't have to reduce it. We just want to know how long it is. So pause the video, figure out the length of PR, and then come back and check your answer. Okay, so uh, fill in um, the distance formula or use Pythagorean Theorem. 3 squared is 9, 5 squared is 25, that adds up to 34. So PR is the square root of 34 units long. So any triangle that has side lengths of 3, 5, and the square root of 34 is going to be congruent to triangle PQR. You would just have to line up the corresponding parts, okay? All right, let me slide this up a bit. So again, that was side lengths of 3, 5, and the square root of 34. Okay, now a couple more of these we can count again. So if we look at the distance from R to S, the distance from R to S is 3. The distance from R to T is 5. Those were the two legs. So using... Pythagorean theorem, 3 squared plus 5 squared, 9 plus 25 is 34, the square root of 34. If you use the distance formula, you'll see that 
uh, difference of the x's, 2 minus 5 squared plus the difference of the y's, negative 3 minus 2 squared, still gives us the square root of 34. So triangle PQR is congruent to, now I want you to fill in this next spot here. Make, again, make sure that you have the corresponding parts together. So pause the video, write that in there, then check your answer. Okay, so again, order matters here. So if we look, triangle PQR is going to be congruent. Segment PR uh, I'm sorry, segment PQ corresponds with segment SR. Segment QR corresponds to segment RT, and then segment PR corresponds to segment ST. So you should have written triangle S. RT there. That is the only answer that fits there. Alright, moving along, if we look at the distance from W to V, okay, go ahead and fill that in. Find the distance from W to V. Uh, again, pause the video, do the work, check your answer. Okay, so hopefully everyone got the square root of 10 for segment WV. Since no side of triangle PQR is the square root of 10 units long, there's no need to check the other two because all three have to be congruent. As soon as we get one that doesn't match up, we're done. So we would say that triangle PQR is not congruent to triangle VWR. All right. I, by now, hopefully you guys are getting the drill here. Go ahead and... Determine if triangle DFG and triangle LMN are congruent. So graph them and then show that if they are congruent or not. Okay, so here's triangle DFG. The side lengths are DG is 2 units long, DF is 6 units long, and GF would be the square root of 4 and 36, 2 squared plus 6 squared. So that is the square root of 40. You could have used the distance formula for that too. I can reduce the square root of 40, but here I just want to know if something is equal to it, so it doesn't really matter. And here is triangle LMN, kind of overlaps our other stuff. But the sides are again 2, 6, you can count those. and Basically, it's a right triangle here, so use Pythagorean Theorem. You get the square root of 40 for that length, too. So, we have three pairs of congruent sides. DG, congruent to LN. LM, congruent to DF. And then segment MN is congruent to segment FG. So, now, if we write our congruent statement, we have triangle DF. G is congruent. Make sure your corresponding parts line up here. It would be triangle L, M, N. Uh, just real quick, what would it be if I had originally written triangle F, D, G? What would that be congruent to? Okay, hopefully, lining up your corresponding parts, D correspond, I'm sorry, F corresponds with M, D corresponds with L, and G I've got in the same space, G corresponds with M. So, no, both of those are equivalent congruent statements. They're both saying the same thing. All right, example three, I'm just going to go really quick through this one in the last couple checkpoints. Basically, because a side, 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 if you have three side lengths, that can't move without breaking apart the, the polygon. That's why when you see bridges and things being built, okay, there's often a lot of triangles in them because those triangles offer support. You can't move that around without breaking it apart. Uh, think about if you just had rectangles like that. If the fr frame of your house is like that, you could tilt that without breaking it apart. So that's why if you ever look at a house while it's being framed, 
there will be some kind of crossbar going across it so that it can't stretch out. That nailed in there is going to force it to be square. So on to the actual example. It says explain why the table with the diagonal legs is stable while the one without diagonal legs can collapse. Well, the table with the diagonal legs forms triangles with fixed side lengths. Okay, You cannot change the shape of that. By the side-side-side congruence postulate, these triangles cannot change shape. Now, if we look at the other table, oh, so the table is stable, sorry. A uh, table without diagonal legs is unstable because that will be able to wobble. Those legs could go off at an angle and still be the same size. So let's look at the last couple checkpoints here. Uh, if we look at these, like I said, I don't want to get too into this. Uh, number four would be stable, okay? Because you have triangles that can't change shape. On the other hand, number five would be unstable because those other polygons, you can move around the sides of quadrilaterals. Okay. So again, you can move the sides of quadrilaterals. Okay, one last thing before we go. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the lesson, this whole one is going to... Um, we're going to learn some shortcuts to proving that two triangles are congruent. That's what the rest of this chapter is about. So I want you to come up with a list of shortcuts somewhere in your notes. You have to have all of these memorized. So in your notes, write a list of shortcuts. Now, right now, your list is pretty short. The only one you have is the side, side, side postulate. We are going to add to this list through the rest of the chapter. So again, put this somewhere in your notes where it's going to be easy to find. You will need to know this list because it is this list and this list only to be able to show that two triangles are congruent. That's it. I'll see you guys in class tomorrow. And until then, have a good night.